All right, recap of what we did. We got a Power FC. Um, I've been switching back and forth because the car is not wanting to idle right now. I got it idling with the Power FC, but then it turned off and it didn't want to turn back on again. So then I put the stock ECU back in and now it'll start, but it won't stay running. And what I'm getting is a right underneath here, that guy, the, the, uh, this guy, the black with the white connector, that'll just fucking hum like a bitch. So I'm going to look into that and see what that is. Recap, we got this installed. We fixed the wire that runs to the coolant sensor. So I have extra wiring in the car for extra length. Um, up here, I don't think we did anything else. We did some wire repairs down by the ECU. I swapped out the fuse for the meter. So, and that actually controls the cooling fans as well. So now when I turn on my key, boop, we get everything, which makes me very happy. But we're still not getting RPM, which either is gonna be a wiring issue somewhere along the way, or it's gonna be an issue with the cluster, which if it's an issue with the cluster, that's fairly upsetting because uh, I just got that cluster and it was supposed to be in functioning order. But sending it off to get repaired is a bit cheaper than buying a new cluster. So worst comes to worst, we go send it off and get repaired. So with a little bit of CAD, cardboard aided design, we got oh, a plate and uh, I'm gonna go to work make one out of some metal, and then we're gonna make two plates that go on the other side. That just basically will pinch this into place, and then I'm gonna put some double-sided tape, like rubber, like a uh, foam ring. I'm gonna do that. And then with that bolted on, and then this finished up, the car inside should be pretty much sealed from the outside once uh, that shift boot is fully on. There it is. I have it taped up so I can mark the holes I need to drill on the inside. And I'm going to be drilling two holes, one on this side and one on that side, or one on this side and two on that side, I think it is. And then I can drill the holes in the plates here. And then I'm going to paint them all black and let them dry and then put a seal on there and mount it to the car fully. So, and then I get to clean up all these wires, make them look neat. And then as for the fuel pressure gauge, it goes right in the side over there. I have to figure out how to make it look pretty and sit there nicely, but I just got a glow shift gauge shipped in like two days and was here, so that was sick. But it's just gonna put some thread sealing on here and on this port, and then I'll be able to watch the fuel pressure. And this is what comes with it, just installation instructions, but it's fairly straightforward. There's nothing you gotta do to it. You just have to install it. So I'm talking very fast. I think I went over everything. I swept, I pushed the car out, swept out the garage. Ah, yes, headlights, I have new bulbs in them. I just have to get the buckets fully tightened down and then I can roll the car out once it's nighttime, align the headlights, and then fully put all the covers and stuff on them. And then I can put the bumper on and all that would be left is whatever else was left on the list. Sorry, I just went over. That would be done, done done all that would really be left is getting the alternator belt tightened and getting the car tuned to idle right and drive right so with oh yeah ah let me lay down here and show you guys bam there's a sway bar and links are tightened over there so now the car actually has like all the suspension it's supposed to have so that's cool um, it actually makes the sway bar the lowest point of the car, which is interesting, but you know, it is what it is. Also, I left the battery connected all night and it's still fully charged. Actually, it was like two days. Oh my God, she has pink hair. Sorry, um, I got distracted. So I'm gonna clean up this whole area. I'm already starting to get all this organized. Um, this is just like used parts and extra shit. And then same with, this is unused parts my glass and then my interior bits. So down here is how it's gonna stay. These wheels are gonna get swapped out with the other ones because these are the winter tires that are going on the Mazda 3 next month. And then that's about it for now. I'm gonna get all this stuff put in the garage because I'm feeling very dehydrated. And I'm gonna go get some water and a Sharpie so I can mark 
the holes on that. And I'll be right back when that's done. What's cool is now I plug the stock ECU back in, but now when I fucking turn it on, it starts and the fuel pump's going, which is great. That is an improvement. I think the throttle position sensor is all out of whack because that's what was fucking going crazy when I plugged in the other ECU. But now I don't need a fucking jumper harness anymore for the uh, for the uh, fuel pump relay. Now I can uh, probably loom this all back up. Unless I'm probably gonna. I'm probably going to rewire this again, so I'm not going to loom it back up, but it's working, which is improvement. So I just plugged in the stock ECU and it, uh, it starts, but it's really weird. I, I don't know. Before it wasn't dying out. Now, after I plugged in the Apex E and then plugged the stock one back in, it's dying out. So I got this from someone else. That pin right there is a switch 12 volt power source. And the purple to green wire is ran all the way above, uh, out of the way of everything. Um, there's definitely lower hanging wires, so I'm not gonna worry about zip tying it quite yet or anything like that. Um, right over to the center where it provides power to boost gauge and the other two gauges. All right, so this I'm not fully mounting up and doing everything until uh, I make sure this guy's good. But now, bam, they uh, turn on with the key and that's that. I think the, uh, it's hard to tell, but I think the air fuel ratio gauge is slightly crooked to the left, but uh, it's like the press fit is so tight that like trying to rotate it actually just starts to like strip out like the housing on the, or like the, cause there's a, uh, the screen is held on by this black piece here. So whatever it is right now, it's fairly straight. So uh, it is what it is, you know, maybe it'll piss me off one day and I'll fix it. But for now, it's not the end of the world. 70,000 mile dash, uh, relatively accurate to what the car is. That's new. There's a scratch in the oil pressure. Um, so yeah, we got gauges proper, properly installed this time. All right, back out here once again. Um, I rolled the car out and I vacuumed it all out. I just have to give the car itself a wipe down and wipe down all my interior bits and that'll be all nice and clean. And then of course, what I've been talking about forever, getting the tint residue off this window, which is on the goals for tonight. So. Um, I don't think I went over this last time, but I did delete my air separator tank because I didn't like the way that that sat up there and I don't have the funds right now to get a new one, but I did have the funds to get this cap. So this cap deleted the lines that ran up there. I capped the cap on the radiator. I put a cap right here, which I'm not so sure how this one's gonna hold up because it's not the tightest. And it's also not like the best material, but, and then I capped back there, but back, the hose back there, I'm planning on replacing with a new hose eventually. Um, and then I just ran the thing, the hose from the overflow up there. I capped this intake port and this intake port. So now the air coming in only comes through the filters. Hi, Ali. Hi, Hi, Austin. This guy's chopping off the mufflers on his 3.6 Charger. Because like he likes turtles, apparently. Um, so I got a, uh, I got the base map loaded up on the power fc with the data log it uh took took a little bit of brain power a little bit of figuring out but now we've got an idle and it's idling smoother than ever which is great um we're taking it 10 minutes to learn but there is one thing um or a couple things one i'm gonna need to finish installing the fuel pressure gauge so i can adjust that properly two um my fuel pump even though I fixed it last time and it was working, uh, it stopped working, so I have to jump the relay again. And uh, what's the third thing? Oh, oh yeah, the, the third thing is a good thing. I got I got this uh, this plate all painted, and I put the little gasket on it, and that's going to go on the firewall.
to make sure that right there where the regulator and all the fuel lines are isn't exposed to the cabin. So, um, we're waiting for the 10 minute idle to uh, kind of settle out. And then, honestly, idle is starting to get a lot smoother. It started at about 10 AFR. Now it's dipping down to 11 and 12, getting a little bit more healthy, sounding a lot better. Uh, it looks like we're at 80 degrees and about negative 14 and a half inches of vacuum. Inches, is it in inches? <laughs> I don't, I don't know what that's measured in, but we will, uh, we'll see how it goes. I need to, uh, swap out the coolant for, or the water for coolant. Um, I'm not big brain. I, this is, this belt's still not fully tensioned, but it's spinning for now. So, uh, tension the belt, swap out the water for coolant and clean everything up. Seems like for now, this is, uh, doing the trick. Unless that's water leaking out right there. Nah. Nah, that's fine. But, now we wait. Wait, wait, wait. And then, uh, I think that's all for tonight. The car's running again. I'm happy. And, uh, tomorrow we'll get it figured out. Yup. Yeah, just, just, just go on a little test drive. It'll be fine. have the wrong end in. You need the other part of the pipe. Okay.